I mean, to be totally frank, um, almost every conspiracy theory that people had about Twitter turned out to be true. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, if, is there a conspiracy theory about Twitter that didn't turn out to be true? Uh, so far, they've all turned out to be true. And if not, uh, more true than people thought. This episode brought to you by Noble Gold. Check out this free coin offer for my viewers. 2022 has shown us what might be coming. So if you're sick of everything being so expensive and the threat of recession hanging over our head constantly, it's time to take action. A precious metal IRA uses tax advantaged gold and silver to keep inflation at bay and give you protection from financial nightmares. And you'll get a stunning free three ounce silver American virtue coin when you open a qualifying IRA account this month month. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. So call 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. And remember, there is always a risk of loss and past performance is not indicative of future results. Welcome back, everyone. Christmas may be over, but Elon Musk keeps giving with another mind-blowing Twitter files drop this morning, showing how the Biden regime and the FBI pressured Twitter to not only silence medical experts and scientists, but Trump himself. David Zweig explains how they did this by censoring info that was true, but inconvenient to the U.S. government policy, by discrediting doctors and other experts who disagreed, and by suppressing ordinary users, including some sharing the CDC his own data. It's like we all knew this was going on, but it's still insane to get confirmation. So far, the Twitter files have focused on evidence of Twitter's secret blacklist, how the companies functioned as a kind of subsidiary of the FBI, and how execs rewrote the platform's rules to accommodate their own political desires. No shit! It was always obvious this was going on, not just on Twitter, but all the social media platforms. Now, this is not to say that the Trump administration didn't also pressure Twitter Twitter and other outlets to censor misinformation about 5G towers spreading COVID, which they did. However, it took a different turn when Biden took over. Quote, when the Biden administration took over, one of their first meeting requests with Twitter executives was on COVID. The focus was on, quote, anti-vaxxer accounts, especially Alex Bernson. Bernson was a vocal critic of the vaccine and was banned for that reason. Later, he did sue Twitter and his account was restored, meaning those who pushed for a censorship were wrong. They're wrong a lot. Remember when Biden said this? What's your message to platforms like Facebook? They're killing people. I mean, it really, they really, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. They were accusing social media companies of killing people as a threat and means of coercing their cooperation and censoring their critics. Fulberton wrote that the Biden team was, quote, very angry that Twitter had not been more aggressive in deplatforming multiple accounts. They wanted Twitter to do more. The Biden team was not satisfied with Twitter's enforcement approach as they wanted Twitter to do more to deplatform several accounts. Because of this dissatisfaction, we were asked to join several other calls. They were very angry in nature. You may be saying, drone tech, doesn't that mean that Twitter was pushing back and not carrying out the government's bidding? Well, in some cases, yes. And there's one particular case we're going to get to here in a minute. But in most cases, they did carry out censorship on behalf of the Biden-controlled government. Twitter did suppress views, many from doctors and scientific experts, that conflicted with the official positions of the White House. As a result, legitimate findings and questions that would have expanded the public debate went missing. As we always suspected, it was never about science. It was always about the science. But they're really criticizing science because I represent science. It's very dangerous, Chuck, because a lot of what you're seeing as attacks on me, quite frankly, are attacks on science. In censoring these legitimate experts and scientists, it may have actually been the Biden regime, the FBI, and Twitter who ended up killing people. Quote, the buck stopped with higher level employees at Twitter who chose the inputs for the bots and decision trees and subjectively decided escalated cases and suspensions. As it is with all people and institutions, there was individual and collective bias. With COVID, this bias bent heavily towards establishment 
attachment dogmas. Basically, the Twitter mods just went along with whatever the Biden administration had reclassified as misinformation, which ended up just being anything that went against their narrative. Dissident, yet legitimate content was labeled as misinformation, and the accounts of doctors and others were suspended both for tweeting opinions and demonstrably true information. Zweig says that there are countless examples of accounts being banned not for spreading misinformation, but just for challenging the Biden regime's narrative. Then Trump got coronavirus. You may remember his triumphant return to the White House where he ripped off his mask and took deep breaths, which drove the media insane. Before that, he tweeted this out. He says, I will be leaving the Great Walter Reed Medical Center today at 6.30 p.m. Feeling really good. Don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. We have developed under the, the Trump administration some really great drugs and knowledge. I feel better than I did 20 years ago. This led to a psychotic meltdown by former FBI agent Jim Baker, who demanded that Trump be censored for daring to suggest that people shouldn't be afraid. Why isn't this POTUS tweet a violation of our COVID-19 policy? <laughs> Especially the don't be afraid of COVID statement. <laughs> Surprisingly, Yoel Roth actually pushed back here, explaining that optimism is not misinformation. Hey Jim, adding you to the main thread on the subject. In short, this tweet is a broad optimistic statement. It does not incite people to do something harmful, nor does it recommend against taking precautions or following mask directives or other guidelines. It doesn't fall within the published scope of our policies. Curious whether you have a different read on it though. No doubt giving him an opportunity to try and come up with something. So as you might expect, this kind of pushback was rare. And as we points out, the decisions were made via the political leanings of senior staff and government pressure that the public health authorities approach to the pandemic, prioritizing mitigation over other concerns was the science. Information that challenge that view such as showing harms of vaccines or that could be perceived as downplaying the risk of covid especially to children was subject to moderation and even suppression no matter whether such views were correct or adopted abroad all right folks just some crazy stuff i'll put a link in the description and pinned comment to the original thread so you can check it out yourself but if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button share and subscribe then make sure to leave a comment and join the discussion thanks a lot i'll see you all in the next one Let's <laughs> go.